Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're gonna be working on this interesting viewer suggested in tech world using Riemann zeta functions, so stay tuned. Okay, here's the question. The question is evaluate this integral from zero to infinity, x times ln of tan x dx. So at the end, we'll get Riemann zeta function, right? So first of all, we already know tan x. We can represent this as now x minus x cubed over 3 plus big O of x to the power of 5. Then at the same time, also tan x is represented as 1 minus e to the power of negative 2x over 1 plus e to the power of negative 2x. And then let me make a substitution. Let me just call k as e to the power of negative 2x. So call k as e to the power of negative 2x. And of course, for x is greater than 0, then your k has to be between 0 and 1. OK, then we can represent your tan x as 1 minus k over 1 plus k. And using this, we can represent ln of tan x first, right? So that is why ln of tan x is then going to be the same as ln of 1 minus k minus ln of 1 plus k. And about these two log terms, we'll be using series expansion for logarithm. So first, ln of 1 minus k is represented as negative summation from n is 1 to infinity, k to the power of n over n. OK, then ln of 1 plus k. This is the same as summation from n is 1 to infinity. We should have alternating signs. So we have negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 over n times k to the power of n. So let's combine these two to represent ln of tan x, right? So ln of tan x. This is then going to be, let me go parenthesis, negative summation from n is 1 to infinity, k to the power of n over n. OK, then we have minus uh, parenthesis summation when n is from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 times k to the power of n over n. And if you combine these two, pulling negative sign out, right? Then it looks like negative of summation uh, from n is 1 to infinity. Then we should have 1 plus parenthesis negative 1 to the power of n plus 1. And then that over n times k to the power of n. And since we have alternating sign, negative 1 to the power of n plus 1, let's analyze when n is even number versus when n is odd number, right? So first, if n is an even number, if n is an even number, then we should have okay, negative 1 to the power of n plus 1. This is going to be negative 1. So that's why then this numerator part 1 uh, plus negative 1. This is equal to 0. That means the term will vanish, right? And second, if n is odd number, then we should have negative 1 to the power of n plus 1. This is positive 1. So 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. That means all the terms will survive. So meaning all the even terms will vanish and only odd terms will survive. So using that, we can talk about ln of tan x is then going to be the same as negative 2 times summation uh, n is from 0 to infinity of k to the power of 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1, same one. And make sure we substituted k as e to the power of negative 2x. So that is why that k to the power of 2n plus 1, this is the same as e to the power of negative 2x 
to the power of 2n plus 1. And this we can rewrite as e to the power of factoring negative 2 out, parenthesis, and we have 2n plus 1 times x. Okay, so once again, this ln of tanh x. Okay, this is then going to be the same as that negative 2 times summation n is from 0 to infinity. Okay, that of, uh, let's use this now, right? So you should have e to the power of negative 2 parenthesis 2n plus 1 x, that over 2n plus 1. Okay, then let's go back to our integral. Let me call this integral as the i. Okay, then integral i was 0 to infinity of x times ln of tanh x dx. Okay, now we can rewrite this using this, right? This is the same as then negative 2 times summation from n is 0 to infinity. Okay, then that of, let's pull this 1 over 2n plus 1 out. It times integral from 0 to infinity of everything else. x times e to the power of negative 2 times 2n plus 1 times x. Then we have dx, of course. Okay, so this integral is looking familiar, right? But that is for say a is now greater than zero. We have this nice integral, integral from zero to infinity of x times e to the power of negative ax, and then we have dx. This is the same as one over a squared, right? In our case, a has to be two times two n plus one. So for our case, this a should be two times two n plus one. So let's plug it in. This two times two n plus one to the a. Then this integral is now integral from 0 to infinity of x times e to the power of negative 2, parenthesis 2n plus 1 x dx. This is the same as then 1 over, okay, bracket 2 times 2n plus 1 square. So this is then the same as 1 over 4 times parenthesis 2n plus 1 square. Okay, so the integral i is then the same as negative 2 times, right? So negative 2 times summation, okay, from n is 0 to infinity. Then we have 1 over 2n plus 1, okay, then that times this value, 1 over 4 times 2n plus 1 squared. So making a calculus for this, this is the same as then negative 1 over 2 times summation, still the same. When n is from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2n plus 1, now q. Okay, once again, earlier we checked how even terms will vanish. So we should sum over odd indices. So that means... Summation from n is 0 to infinity. That of 1 over 2n plus 1 cube. So we can represent this as summation from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n cube. Okay, then minus summation still n is from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n entire thing cube. So that is why these two are looking like Riemann zeta function form, right? So we can represent this as Riemann zeta of 3 and minus 1 over 8 times Riemann zeta of 3, which will be calculated as 7 over 8 times Riemann zeta of 3. Okay, so going back to our integral. So integral i is going to be then the same as Negative 1 over 2 times 7 over 8 times Riemann zeta of 3. 
So making a calculation for this, then the answer for this question is negative 7 over 16 times Riemann zeta of 3. And the Riemann zeta of 3 is the average constant, right? So the answer for this question is negative 7 over 16 times Riemann zeta of 3, the average constant. So that's the answer for this question. Okay, so pretty interesting viewer suggested integral that we ended up getting Riemann zeta function. How amazing. 